There are many fights in anime I immensely enjoy, but this one more than many others for a lot of reasons. Adolf Reinhardt is a character who became a test subject after his parents failed to survive the surgery required to survive on Mars, along with the abilities of a compatible organism. Losing his parents at age of 7 and then having the military take custody over him, along with several other children, all of whom were viable test subjects, but Reinhardt volunteered to protect the other children. Reinhardt is put through surgery and torturous tests. The experiment is a success and makes it possible for other candidates to use organisms other than insects in the surgery. Terraformers is a show that, among a lot of things, really likes to cement how no one is truly safe on Mars, and to instill hopelessness where one might have thought there was hope. At least that's how I see it, and how effective the show is at doing that depends on the viewer of course. But when I watched it for the first time, I felt, except for a few characters, that anyone could be taken out at any point. Some scenes makes you think someone is about to be picked off, only for them to turn it around, just as unexpectedly. And then the opposite of that in other scenes. One thing that stays consistent, however, is the violence and making sure you know a character has been written off. And this fight in particular exhibits all those things and more. It starts with Reinhardt's escape vessel being pushed down into a crater by a larger terraformer, piloting its own escape vessel. Reinhardt attempts to accelerate, but the vessel is disabled by a rocket launcher, only for Reinhardt to then notice the amount of terraformers before him and his team members. While the only two combat-oriented members of this division gets ready to fight, the others stay behind in the vehicle. Reinhardt instructs Isabella to take care of the one larger terraformer, as Reinhardt assigns himself to the 300 or so in front of him. Reinhardt throws a lightning rod slash shuriken into a weapon carried by a terraformer, causing it to explode, before he states, <laughs> Which, based on the visual information, could be a reference to his wife cheating on him and how either she was too weak against temptation, or how he feels weak due to it. Although, I feel like his wife's actions were more premeditated than the show lets on, but I'll talk about that later. Reinhardt then throws six lightning rods into six terraformers and releases a charge of electricity, frying them before we get some brief information regarding Reinhardt's organism, like we have with other characters, which is one of my favorite parts of the show. We cut back to Isabella, the other combat-oriented crew member, and see her looking confidently at the larger terraformer, telling it to pay attention before praising its physique while lamenting that it's a roachy bastard. We go back to Reinhardt and get more information about his organism, Electrophorus electricus, while he defeats more and more terraformers, telling us how his organism escapes fatal wounds due to its insulating fat, and how Reinhardt has similar protection in the form of grounding devices. We're also informed that whenever either discharge electricity, they receive a shock as well. And if you want to be a bit pretentious about it, it could mean that Reinhardt doesn't actually enjoy fighting, as he's much more caring than he lets on, as we'll find out later in the fight. But even without calling it pretentious, it seems somewhat obvious considering that one of the reasons he's there is due to him wanting to protect the other children, and not some lust for battle, and how it hurts him to hurt other beings, just like the electricity he sends out also damage him, to a degree. We are taken to Reinhardt's past, being electrocuted and surviving, proving the experimental surgery to have been a success, at the cost of Reinhardt's body and soul. We see his electric abilities being tested, before we're taken a bit further into his future, with him stating that his life was already bought, how he had no choice but to work for the army and take part in their experiments, and how we just wanted to escape their monitoring and die, since he was still allowed to go to school, but was under constant surveillance, and that that changed when he met her. We see shots of people going about their day-to-day -day life, seemingly carefree before cutting to Reinhardt, sitting on a bench outside of the school, feeding the birds, when all of a sudden the birds scatter and fly away as a woman walks in front of Adolf, making him pull up the zipper on his high collar jacket, due to the damages incurred from the experiments. The woman looks at him, first with apprehension that quickly turns into a smile, before she asks if he is indeed Adolf Reinhardt from her Spanish class. He doesn't reply as she goes on to introduce herself as Rosa Cypress. She asks him if he remembers her, to which he says he don't. Rosa then says that this will have to be their first meeting. 
Now that we're here, I can finally talk about this person and go into a bit of detail as to why I think her actions were much more premeditated than explicitly shown. He is under constant military surveillance, seemingly has no interest in other people and suddenly this woman comes and acts all friendly with him. I feel like she must have known that he was part of the military one way or another and that he would come into money that could be hers. Just look at how she looks at him at first. Almost like she's thinking, uh, oh, I have to get with that in order to get his money? Oh well, before she starts to groom him. Now, you might think that what happens later might be too stupid of her if that's her plan, but hey, stupidity. She sits down next to Reinhardt and reads her book, asking if it's okay for her to sit there, which Reinhardt says it is, somewhat coldly, but seemingly a bit nervously as well. We hear Reinhardt's voice again, saying that that was the day his life changed. We follow Reinhardt and Rosa as they grow closer to each other, and one day their mutual friends suggest that they go on a date on Reinhardt's birthday. They go to a museum and have a pleasant time together, before we cut to the pair standing on a bridge, where Rosa gives Reinhardt a scarf and jokingly says she worries other girls will see his attractiveness, to which he responds that she won't have to worry about that showing his loyalty and honesty. She gives him a second gift in form of a kiss on his cheek, and considering Reinhardt's background, this is probably his best birthday ever, as far as he knows right now at least. Reinhardt remembers his mother's words about finding someone and marrying them, like she did with Reinhardt's father, and so Reinhardt did. He marries Rosa and says he found happiness, or so he thought before we cut back to Reinhardt discharging electricity, defeating yet another group of terraformers, breathing heavily as he woefully wonders why he's thinking about that right now. We go back again to see Reinhardt standing outside the building, as Rosa sheets on him inside. We don't get to see how exactly she's caught in the act, but she apologizes, saying she knew it would hurt him, but did it anyway. Saying she loves him, but as I said, she's probably crying over her slip-up and the potential loss of money had Reinhardt left her, claiming she couldn't help it because she was lonely as Reinhardt looks out the window. Betrayed by the one person alive whom he loved, as she asks for forgiveness before he apparently forgives her and says that he loves her too, she thanks him over and over before we cut to a hospital bed, seeing Rosa holding a child as we find out that it isn't his. Once again, Reinhardt was lost, even more so than before as he states he couldn't even go back to being a guinea pig. We see Reinhardt on the phone, talking to his wife and says that he loves her and that he's coming home before we see the street but with terraformers transparently on the screen, probably signifying how he's thinking about his past even with the terraformers in front of him and how he's snapping back into the present moment. We go back to seeing Reinhardt defeat more terraformers as he wishes that they would kill him and end his suffering. More and more terraformers march towards him as he beckons them to come, saying he'll kill them, almost as if his sorrow turns into rage, before we go to the end credits of the episode, instead of the usual outro. This is a good time to say that this fight also shows a really good implementation of CGI and more than less static shots, using effects, filters and sound effects that really provide an impact even without over the top Sakuga animation, which is nice but not exactly necessary to make a scene good. The music is also very well implemented, going from brooding to bombastic to somewhat peaceful depending on the scene. And it's just another reason why I enjoy this fight so much, let alone the whole of season 1, and the use of Mars, Bringer of War as Reinhardt's theme and for the credits fits perfectly in my opinion. The episode opens up with rain and thunder before seeing Reinhardt standing tall, ready to take on more terraformers before we go back to Isabella, the other combat-oriented crew member. Isabella asks which body part the larger terraformer prefers having destroyed by her first, before she leaps into the air and lunges down towards it to kick it. She is met with a single punch in response and is turned into a bloody mess. Once again cementing that most characters are very much in danger on Mars. There are other scenes similar to this one, but I feel like this was one of the more surprising ones, as we see how powerful she is, but is then taken out with a single punch. Whereas some of the other similar scenes have a tad bit more of a back and forth, especially since we got one of the aforementioned informational bits on her organism. Reinhardt doesn't seem to react to her being blown to bits before we see the larger terraformer standing as the victor before we go to the intro. We see Reinhardt's wife putting on lipstick as the doorbell is ringing before she takes off her wedding ring and heads out, most likely to cheat on Reinhardt again. I'm not sure if this is while Reinhardt is on Mars or before he goes to Mars, but I think it's the former as even she wouldn't risk being caught a second time, as far as we know at least as she's most likely been unfaithful more than twice. 
Which to me goes to show that she is a person whom use and exploit others for her own gain, while also wanting other things she probably considers pleasurable. And the fact that she does this proves that she lied to Reinhardt about loving him and that she must have known about his connection to the military, and she knew she could exploit him for money. And if it wasn't hammered in enough, this adds to the list of things Reinhardt has been used for. First for experimentation, and now for financial security. Reinhardt tries to stop thinking about the past, thinking that it shouldn't be on his mind since it already happened, as he electrocutes more terraformers. He sees his wife among the terraformers, and I take it as one of two things. It either symbolizes how he can't stop thinking about it, or it's how he wishes she was literally among them, so that he could electrocute her as well. Reinhardt states that the sadness and the nightmares don't disappear. The sadness of being betrayed, losing his parents, being used for experimentation, all of it boiling inside of him as he fries more and more terraformers. If it was intended or not I don't know, but the way they mix scenes from his past with the terraformers marching towards him really sells how he can't stop thinking about it and how he tries to focus on what's in front of him. Suddenly, the larger terraformer tries to jump Reinhardt from behind before we see a black screen with a flame burning in the corner, which could either just be a light from the room we're about to see, or it's to represent a nagging flame inside of Reinhardt. Just like how the sadness and nightmares won't stop, his rage burning inside of him won't stop either. We see Rosa sit on a bed with Reinhardt, as they're about to become intimate when it all goes static, turning into a few shots of a man that isn't Reinhardt, touching Rosa, and again, it could simply mean that Reinhardt thinks about how she was with him, but then she did and how little he actually meant to her, and how the fire keeps nagging him about this painful knowledge. We see a splash of water and it's unclear whether Reinhardt caused it, or if it's the larger terraformer punching quickly through the raindrops. Reinhardt dodges its punch, memories of his relationship going through his mind, as he puts his finger against its eyes, sending waves of electricity through it as he states that she made him human and that's all he ever wanted to be, just like she is a human in his eyes, his electricity signifying his unrelenting fury before we see a shot of him standing naked in front of her, which at first I felt was him figuratively feeling naked in her presence as he's never let anyone that close before, or it could just be a literal memory, still wondering how she could do something so animalistic as we see the child of our affair. The larger terraformer is thoroughly fried as it falls to the ground. Reinhard, having spent a considerable amount of energy, stands on shaky legs, breathing heavily as he beckons the other terraformers to attack him more, stating he'll kill them all. Displaying his rage and how he wants to take it out on the terraformers, his voice breaking as we see his tortured expression. The way Reinhardt is presented, if I haven't conveyed this enough, really does seem like a person who is kind-hearted and wants to help, but was dealt a series of awful cards, and is now trying to vent while doing his job. It really makes me wonder how things could have gone differently for him. A vehicle arrives with yet another larger terraformer, along with a unique looking one, who seems to be a leader of sorts. The unique looking terraformer points and smiles at Reinhardt, most likely conveying how he wants his electrical powers, and commands the terraformers to attack in a more organized fashion. And it's also a good time to go back to what I said about the whole back and forth action this show loves to include, because we're about to have a lot more of that in a moment. Reinhardt defeats terraformer after terraformer, throwing lightning rods and discharges electricity, but their numbers are too many as they close the gap and try to grab Reinhardt. We can assume that he discharges a huge amount of electricity because it cuts away, then back to him sitting on the ground with partially smoldering terraformers in front of him. Having exhausted himself from the battle, he remembers his life as he states what the viewer most likely already knew. <laughs> before he apologizes to his teammates in his mind, as he thinks he's about to be killed by the terraformers, even though he's been doing his best to protect his crew members all this time. But then the crew members whom Reinhardt had been protecting, charges out with net guns and their own flesh and blood, giving back to the man whom has been fighting to protect them. And even though I know that they stand no chance, the solidarity and respect they harbor for Reinhardt is almost palpable, as they, just like Reinhardt, do their very best to protect him. Two of the other crew members are seen inside the other functional escape vessel, stating that it'll work, and it feels as though they might actually have a chance of escaping. Reinhardt's crew members fight with every ounce of their being as Eva tries to drag Reinhardt to safety. They comment on Reinhardt always saving them, claiming that they're useless trash, both on Earth and on Mars. But Reinhardt disagrees, because he's not the type of person to see people in that light, not even the ones whom have treated him the worst receives retribution from him and tells them to run and abandon him. Once again, just like when he was a child, 
displaying his self-sacrificial nature in favor of others. One of the crew members literally steps in front of a terraformer and takes a punch for Reinhardt, going straight through him as he states, with tears and blood running down his face, that if they were to forget and abandon Reinhardt, then they really would be trash. The terraformers make their next move as they pull out net guns of their own and capture all the crew members but Reinhardt and Eva, as all Eva can do is stare in horror while Mirapix begs Eva to take Reinhardt and make the vaccine to save her son infected with the alien engine virus, willing to sacrifice herself towards that end and for Reinhardt. Eva notices that Reinhardt has gone cold as she cries out in dismay before we're once again taken to Reinhardt's past. Seeing him pet a dog while saying how he didn't really want to be the way he is, but how he loves all the things that have gotten involved in his life. And the way I take this is that he thinks that Rosa truly is a loving person and loves him for who he is and how everything he went through was worth it because he finally found someone that made him human. Based on the visual information, it feels as though it's implied that he even loves the child born from Rosa's affair. All hope seems lost when all of a sudden, The next part of the fight is my favorite, as it displays a lot of things I've already mentioned, while also being simply a treat to witness. After we've gotten information on how the AED, Automated External Defibrillator, works, Reinhardt is revived and releases wave after wave of electricity as he gets up, naming each of his crew members. Eva, Mark, Endike, Sandra, Fritz, Antonio, Basil. Proclaiming how he'll save them before striking a epic pose as he inhales his medicine in lethal amounts. And it's difficult for me to put into words just how well this part of the fight is handled. The effects, the choreography, the music and the sound effects all just click. It shows how you can make the best of what you have without having incredibly fluid animation. Not that it's bad per se, but it's not the most fluid either. And I feel like it wouldn't have been the same feeling had it had the aforementioned Sakuga. As he recites a bible verse, Reinhardt plows through the terraformers with his electricity, stomping into the wet ground and sending electricity into the many terraformers, moving at high speeds as he just unloads his lightning rods with insane accuracy before none stand between him and the terraformer leader. <laughs> He throws two lightning rods towards the terraformer leader, and the way it's portrayed it seems as though he moves faster than the raindrops falling towards the ground. They are blocked by what seems like the leader's bodyguard, but almost as if Reinhardt counted on it, he gives it his middle finger, and makes it so a huge thunderbolt crash down through the flagpole and electrocute the terraformer leader, ending the episode with a literal In most shows I've seen this would have been the end. This would be where the other crew members rejoice over Reinhardt beating the odds before he either succumbs to the amount of medication but still saving the crew members. Or actually surviving the whole ordeal. But this is Terraformers, the show that loves displaying hopelessness and despair and playing with your emotions. Eva is distraught over Reinhardt before he wipes a tear from her face, telling her it's dangerous getting wet, like it did in the earlier episodes, displaying their mutual care for each other. Before we, as per usual, hear the narrator explain how a certain thing works, in this case how you can survive being struck by lightning, as we see the terraformer leader being resuscitated in a rather unique way. The terraformer leader is resuscitated and looks at Reinhardt, seemingly even more intent on getting his electric powers than before, before he orders his underlings to bring out the machine guns and they obediently take aim. Being exhausted from the fight, Reinhardt is unable to remain on his feet and falls to his knees. Suddenly, Eva takes a stand in front of Reinhardt in a futile attempt to protect him from the imminent barrage of bullets. It's sad in a whole different way now. After having been used for his entire life, Reinhardt now evidently have people who genuinely care about him, only it's on an incredibly hostile planet with its entire population out to kill its human visitors. And now that we've reached this part, I finally get to talk about how Terraformers does a really good job at giving characters backstories. Even though some were given after a character's demise, it still felt fitting to me, and just simply clicked. And the following is very similar. 
Getting knowledge of the past and reasons for going to Mars of Eva Frost, Uwaku Eriksson and Sandra Hoffman. And I might be biased, but it fits so well with the scene and the soundtrack, Recollection, playing in the background works incredibly well. While Reinhardt's crew members are being dragged off, and while the terraformers are aiming their guns, about to execute Eva and Reinhardt, he begs himself and his body to move, as the terraformer leader gives the order, and a hail of bullets is let loose. Reinhardt tells himself how he absolutely has to protect them, as he musters every ounce of strength he has left as he stands up and creates an electric barrier. <laughs> Deflecting all of the incoming bullets, letting out a pained yet powerful scream, saying he'll save his crew members no matter what make the vaccine and go back to Earth, where he won't live a lie anymore before we see a younger version of himself without the scars and damage he has incurred, signifying the child he holds within himself that never got to be just that, a child. With every bullet deflected, the barrier dissipates and Reinhardt stands defiantly. And almost as if the show wants to tell you, oh, so you thought that he'd make it just because he had a backstory and a couple of epic scenes, well, Tough luck. The terraformers decide on a more primitive approach as they ready their slingshots and miniature boulders. Reinhardt laments, and in a last ditch effort in protecting one of his crew members, Eva, he shields her with his own flesh and blood after telling her to leave him there, and a second barrage ensues. But with no protection to be had on Reinhardt's or his crew's part, the rocks tear through him like a knife through parchment as Eva screams in horror. And after all of that which we just witnessed, the terraformer leader orders the barrage to stop, and Reinhardt falls to the ground, not to rise again. So, just like I said, terraformers love to play with its viewer, going back and forth and not being 100% clear as to which party will be left standing. And this fight truly exhibits just that. From seeing Isabella confidently challenge the larger terraformer, to seeing Reinhardt exert his last remaining energy after having pushed through his limits and having defeated countless terraformers. Eva says that she doesn't want to leave Reinhardt, not like she could if she tried anyhow, but it goes to show how utterly unfair Reinhardt's life was, and is very poignant as well. Only after having been used and betrayed, he found loyalty and love but in such a dire situation that ultimately ended with his demise. The general fluidity of the episode increases momentarily as we see the terraformer leader jump down behind Eva, seemingly about to grab her as one of the crew members tell her to run. Eva stands up and attacks the terraformer leader, with absolutely zero effect, as she screams that she won't leave her beloved Reinhardt behind. Whether it's romantic love or platonic love isn't explicitly stated. As she desperately beats on the terraformer leader, it orders another terraformer to grab Reinhardt's body, when suddenly... I like to think of it as Reinhardt getting the last word, even though he didn't know about it and had no way of knowing it activated. It still feels somewhat satisfying that the terraformer leader didn't get its hands on Reinhardt's body. They seem to know what the high-pitched noise indicated and quickly make a run for it, and the remaining terraformers follow suit while leaving the other crew members behind. We get one final flashback to Reinhardt's childhood and hear his mother tell him to find someone he loves and marry them and that he'll find happiness one day. And in a sad, twisted way, he did find some sort of love in his crew members, and is held tightly and dearly by Eva. The crew members smiling and crying as Eva states that they're connected through a bond stronger than blood. And then... So, Reinhardt was a character whom lost his parents, was used as a guinea pig, betrayed by the one of the very few people he loved, and then found genuine loyalty and affection on an incredibly hostile planet that became his tomb. If there's anything to take from the three episodes that feature Reinhardt and his crew, is that life can be incredibly cruel and unfair, and that you can find light even in the darkest of places. I have watched Terraformers about 4 or 5 times, but this fight in particular at least 15 times, no joking. There are a couple of differences in the manga and anime, and some things I've talked about I've used information from the manga since they were left unexplained in the anime. For example, the lightning strike in the anime seems like just that, a lightning strike summoned by Reinhardt, while it's much more explained in the manga, among a few other things. I highly recommend the manga if you haven't read it, and I'm in no way an expert on animation and such, but this fight, 
and Terraformer Season 1 in of itself really shows how you can make scenes really impactful by using the right music, sound effects and visual effects, among other things of course. Personally, Reinhardt's backstory was really gripping, so that, coupled with everything I've already repeated a couple of times, makes for a fight that's in my list of absolute favorites. If you watched this far, I thank you so much for watching. I'm Anime Say, and I'll see you soon. Have a good one.